Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 13th of September. Fire at electric bike showroom in India kills at least eight. PM Modi announces excretia. Pakistan jacks up power tariff again. Residents upset over price hikes amid floods. And Afghanistan tipping towards authoritarianism, says UN rights expert. And now for all the details. Death toll in a fire mishap at an electric bike showroom in India's Sikandrabad city rose to at least eight on Tuesday. A spate of fires this year in electric bikes has alarmed the government, keen to promote their use in its fight on pollution. At least eight people were killed and several others injured after a massive fire broke out at an electric scooter showroom and spread to a hotel in Sikandrabad city of India's southern Telangana state on Monday night. Reports suggested that the fire was caused due to a short circuit when the batteries were being charged in the basement of the building, where about 40 electric bikes were parked. Firefighters rushed to the spot and rescued seven guests in the adjoining hotel who were trapped and were shifted to hospitals. Because of the fire, there was a lot of soot and uh, the entire building was completely dark and com uh, completely spread with soot. And uh, some people tried to jump out also, they fell down. And some, with the help of locals and our police officials, some people did escape. And um, fr uh, from those who were rescued, um, in the hospitals, about eight of them have died. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said on Twitter that he was saddened by the loss of lives in the fire incident and also announced ex gratia. A spate of fires this year in electric bikes has alarmed the government, keen to promote their use in its fight on pollution. And a news from Pakistan, a dust storm in Sehwan town in Pakistan's Sindh province uprooted hundreds of tents sheltering displaced flood victims on Monday as a fresh spell of rains expected in the middle of the month begins to set in, officials have said. The death toll due to unprecedented floods in Pakistan has reached almost 1,400. A dust storm in Sehwan town in Pakistan's Sindh province on Monday uprooted hundreds of tents pitched at roadsides by people made homeless by the recent floods as a fresh spill of rains expected in the middle of the month begins to set in, officials said. Mohammad Hassan, one of those impacted by the storm, said they were sitting under the open sky with nowhere to go after their tents got uprooted by strong winds. The Pakistan Meteorological Department said on Monday it expects more rain in the area in the next few days, posing a new threat to displaced people living in tents or in open along raised highways. The death toll due to the calamity in Pakistan has reached almost 1,400. <laughs> Meanwhile, the flood victims at Sehwan also said that the hordes of the mosquitoes and lack of electricity make their nights miserable at the relief camp. They said children were falling sick from mosquito bites and every night felt like a doomsday. We spend each night with great difficulty. Every night is like a doomsday for us. The mosquitoes are biting and the children cannot sleep due to them. The children are falling sick due to the mosquito bites and the hospitals here are not able to treat every disease from mosquito bites. Hundreds of thousands have been forced from their homes in a disaster blamed on climate change and estimated to have caused losses of about $10 billion, disrupting the lives of nearly 33 million of a population of 220 million. 
And more news from Pakistan. Pakistan's National Electric Power Regulatory Authority on Monday notified a raise of 4.34 rupees per unit on account of fuel cost adjustment. The country's 220 million people are already facing rampant inflation, with consumer price index up 27.3% year on year. Pakistan's National Electric Power Regulatory Authority, NEPRA, on Monday increased the electricity tariff by Rs 4.3 per unit on account of FCA fuel cost adjustment for the month of July. Earlier in June, the power distribution companies had charged Rs 9.9 .9 per unit on account of fuel cost adjustment, which was for one month only. The distribution companies would charge Rs 5.56 per unit less than June in September bills under the FCA. Locals, especially in flood-hit areas, said on Monday that they are fed up due to frequent price hikes and are facing food shortages. Vegetable and fruit prices have soared in markets across Pakistan as devastating rains have ruined crops and disrupted supplies. I came to take the food and I took the food. One is not the food, but the food is not the कोई भी चीज नहीं मिल रही अगर मिलती है तो महंगी मिलती है ठीक मिले ही नहीं अगर जगह मिले थी जगह पे रहा उन जो रेट हुए हो तकरीबन 150 रेट हुए हो तो किलो मिले पे जे आलू बसर मी का सब्जी वगैरह जे मिली वगैरह जब हुआ हेर उन जो रेट 200 रुपया रेट आलू जो 200 रुपया रेट टमाटर बसर जो 200 रुपया रेट आए ही तो इतनी महंगाई थी या सैलाब मुतासिर जे करे जो गरीब मानो मतलब सब्जी वठण जे लाय भी ना है तैयार छो जो उनके पेरा ते घर उन जो मी में बरसात में बुदियो वरी पानी सैलाब जो पानी इन जे हवाले से लोग इते डाडा परेशान हो रहे हैं पाकिस्तान्स 220 मिलियन पीपल आर ऑलरेडी फेसिंग रैंपेंट इन्फ्लेशन विद कंज्यूमर प्राइसेस अप 27.3% ईयर ऑन ईयर इन अगस्त द इकॉनमी इज इन टर्मोइल विद फास्ट डिप्लीटिंग फॉरेन रिजर्व्स and a record depreciation of the rupee against the US dollar. And moving on, Richard Bennett, a top United Nations official, told the UNHRC session in Geneva on Monday that human rights have deteriorated in Afghanistan under the Taliban, describing a staggering repression of women and girls and a descent towards authoritarianism. Several Afghan women activists also addressed the meeting and urged the global body to act. The UN Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in Afghanistan, Richard Bennett, said on Monday that human rights had deteriorated under the Taliban, describing a staggering repression of women and girls and a descent towards authoritarianism, while Afghan women urged the global body to act. Speaking during a Human Rights Council meeting in Geneva, Bennett called for radical changes in the country. Afghans are trapped in a human rights crisis that the world has seemed powerless to address. The severe rollback of the rights of women and girls, reprisals targeting opponents and critics, and a clampdown on freedom of expression by the Taliban amount to a descent towards authoritarianism. This crisis demands ongoing attention from this council. Several Afghan women addressed the same meeting, including rights activist Mehbooba Siraj, who urged the 47-member council to set up a mechanism to investigate abuses. Most girls' secondary schools in Afghanistan have been closed since the Taliban took over in August 2021, after the group made a sudden U-turn on promises to open them in March. A UN official said that some 850,000 girls had so far dropped out of school, placing them at risk of child marriage and sexual economic exploitation. Get a hold of yourselves and let's do something about Afghanistan. It's not going to work this way. As far as, you know, bringing that independent monitoring mechanism, I think it's about time to do that. The ruling Taliban has not been officially recognized by many governments around the world. The mandate to monitor human rights violations in Afghanistan was established by the Geneva-based Council almost a year ago. A draft resolution by the European Union seeks to renew it and a decision is expected by October. 
and United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights Nada Al Nashif on Monday urged Sri Lanka to improve human rights and strengthen institutions to tackle the humanitarian challenges that have sprung from its worst financial crisis in 70 years. The country's Foreign Minister Ali Sabri in response said the incumbent government was committed to ensure rights but would object to any international judicial intervention that it sees as anti-constitutional. Sri Lanka should improve human rights and strengthen institutions to tackle the humanitarian challenges that have sprung from its worst financial crisis in seven decades, Nada Al Nashif, UN Acting High Commissioner for Human Rights, said on Monday. Al Nashif said UN member states and international financial institutions should support Sri Lanka as it tries to assist millions struggling with food, fuel, power and medicine shortages. She also urged Sri Lanka's new government led by President Ranil Vikrame Singhe to end the use of security laws to arrest protest leaders who helped oust former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa in July, while also seeking progress in credible investigation into alleged war crimes during the civil war that ended in 2009. Sri Lankan Foreign Minister Ali Sabri told the same meeting the government was committed to working with the UN on improving human rights but would object to any international judicial intervention that is seized as anti-constitutional. On the latest protests following the economic crisis, Sabri said the government planned a truth-seeking mechanism to promote reconciliation and refer to work on constitutional reform to promote anti-corruption measures and trim presidential powers. Well, in news from Nepal, Nepal and China signed a six-point memorandum of understanding during top Chinese official Li Zansu's visit to Kathmandu on Monday. Nepal House of Representatives Speaker Agni Prasad Sapkota and Li Zansu, the chairman of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress of China, signed the agreement after delegation-level talks at the Nepal Parliament. According to the agreement, both sides would exchange information on each other's legislative, supervisory and governance practices. They agreed to strengthen cooperation under the framework of international and regional parliamentary organizations on matters of common interest. The MOU also mentions the Belt and Road Initiative by China. During his four-day visit, Li is also expected to meet other top political leaders. And in a bid to promote tourism at the famous Eherbal waterfall, authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir organized Eherbal festival this past weekend, which witnessed participation of people from different walks of life, besides many tourists. Multiple stalls, including traditional and cultural stalls, were installed by various departments. Authorities in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir organized Eherbal Festival in Kulgam district this past weekend to promote tourism at the Eherbal waterfall that attracts a large number of visitors during the summer season. Multiple stalls showcasing tradition and culture of the Kashmir Valley, including handloom and handicraft items and local cuisine, were put up during the event near the Eherbal waterfall park. The festival also witnessed participation of students from various schools in painting competitions and sports activities. Attracting a good number of visitors, the event was a treat for locals and tourists alike. तो वो उनका जो रुझान है अभी अहराबल की तरह बढ़ रहा है और आने वाले वक्त में तो वो ज़्यादा ज़्यादा जितनी इसकी पब्लिसिटी हो जाएगी जितना हम इस जगह को बूस्ट करेंगे जितना हम इस जगह को एक्सप्लोर करेंगे उससे क्या होगा कि जितने भी बाहर के लोग हैं वो ज़्यादा ज़्यादा यहाँ पे आएंगे और जाहिर सी बात है उस चीज़ से जब यहाँ पे बाहर के लोग आएंगे तो इकनॉमी तो बढ़ेगी द टूरिज्म डिपार्टमेंट इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर इज मेकिंग कॉन्सर्टेड एंड कोऑर्डिनेटेड एफर्ट्स to promote potential tourism destinations like Eherbal, which is an offbeat tourist destination. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Fired at electric bike showroom in India kills at least 8. PM Modi announces excretia. Pakistan jacks up power tariff again. Residents upset over price hikes amid floods. And Afghanistan tipping towards authoritarianism, says UN rights expert. 
Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.